fantasy baseball fanatics. How you doing? Welcome to the Fantasy MD's Baseball Podcast. Today is Monday, August 8th, 2022. This is our 44th episode. If you guys have been enjoying the podcast, if the MDs have helped you at all this season, we just uh, we just ask that, you know, you throw us a little five-star review on wherever you listen. Um, and then um, as well, if you could write a little something, that really goes a long way to helping us, uh, you know, get boosted up there a little bit. And if you watch on YouTube, you just tap the little bell there and it notifies you every time we drop a new video. And, uh, you know, um, th- that's about it for that. But we do have some big news finally. Uh, we're going to announce the winner of the card giveaway. And that is Elijah Johnson from Houston, Texas. Uh, Buddy, I got those cards in the mail for you already, so they should be on their way. Um, We appreciate everyone that has entered. And uh, we'll be doing another giveaway very, very soon. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Um, And I'm your host, uh, Dominic Martino, as always, here with my brother, my co-host, Matthew Arne. Matt, how are we doing today, brother? Ah, Doing good. Not as good as Elijah, man, but, you know, doing good. Um, you know, which <laughs> I didn't just get all these good yeah. cards, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm doing good. Ready to talk some baseball. And get yeah. This, yeah. Hit this stuff. Good, man. So you want to bring on the finger on the pulse? Right, on so we'll just, yeah, we'll just, yeah, we'll just jump into it with the finger on the pulse. And I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to go anywhere else besides uh, Jacob DeGrom. Uh, he's just out there looking like vintage Jacob DeGrom. He's hitting 102 on the radar gun. Uh, he's been lights out since he came back. Uh, the first outing against Washington on August 2nd, he went five innings, six strikeouts, uh, gave up a run and had a 0.6 whip. Then that uh, second outing uh, yesterday was free, uh, even better. 5.2 innings, he got the win. Uh, 12 strikeouts in 5.2 innings. Uh Gave up a couple runs there on a Dansby Swanson homer, uh, but that was about it. I think that was the only hit he gave up uh, throughout the whole game, and uh, he just looks fantastic. So I figure we know do a little bit of Jacob Degrom rant here. Uh, Matt, what are your thoughts so far on on how he looks? I mean, he looks fantastic. I'm pretty excited for him, except for the fact that I don't have him in any leagues. Um, so I'm not excited for that part. But um, fantasy owners, <laughs> so, uh, a zero shares here too. Yeah, as, a, as fantasy owners should be happy if they did happen to get a share of him. Um, Hey, man, he's going to be great. He's going to pick up right where he left off as, you know, probably the best pitcher in baseball when healthy. So um, I think that good times are about to start rolling. Um, if you haven't tried to make a trade for him, you're probably not going to get him now that they've been holding him all season. Um, God, 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 he's just going to be too damn good. But let me see something real quick. Let me see if anybody's been stupid enough to drop him. Yeah, he's 96% owned. So no shot at anybody yeah, scooping yeah. him off the waiver wire. So, you know, good job if you kept him. Yeah, at this point, man, uh, you, you're not going to be able to trade for him, you know. Uh, and definitely, in most, in most four percent of leagues, if you happen to play in any of those, your eight mans or your six man, whatever those four percent of leagues is, he needs to be 100 percent on. But I just want to point this out. We know uh, Jacob Degrom's getting a little bit older; he's 34 years old. But if you go back from 2018 uh, through this season. Uh, he's got 33 wins to 21 losses. Uh, Jacob DeGrom's got a 195 ERA in that time. Uh, of course, that's 93 starts, 591 innings, a 70, 792 strikeouts. I, I, I got a little flabbergasted there. So that's, that's 200 more strikeouts than innings pitched uh, since 2018 uh, for Jacob DeGrom. And it's a 087 whip in that time. Uh, I think he's just going to age like fine wine as long as, you know, he doesn't, um, you know, wind up getting hurt. Uh, you know, not going to for that one. Um, yeah, the flanges are, are acting up. He, the thing is, he, he can't keep throwing 102 miles an hour. Look at a guy like Justin Verlander who has learned to pitch with um, You know, he used to get up over 102 and he used to do it in the ninth inning. But if you see this year, he's uh, tampered it back a little bit. I think he's sitting around uh, at tops like 97, 98 maybe. So, you know, if Mr. DeGrom can, you know, just uh, tone it back a little bit, avoid the injuries. I think personally you can't. You can't um, top three pitcher for next year, Matt. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, healthy DeGrom equals equals probably my number one pitcher. That's essentially how I look at it. Um, you can't factor into your rankings if somebody's going to be hurt. It's just what they're going to do for you, right? So this is how that's how I view him. He's the best pitcher in baseball when healthy. I'm going to keep drafting him that way. Unless, you know, what his plan just decide to become Montesi. Yeah, yeah. Unless his game changes in Montesi, it's over. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. 
<laughs> yeah, so th- that's the thing is, guys, as long as he stays healthy and, um, you know, doesn't get a case of the Mondesis here, he's the, at least minimum a top three pitcher. Uh, and he, he he does dominate as, as the best pitcher in baseball when healthy. So I wouldn't even be mad if you said he was number one going into next year as long as he stays healthy, right? So with that being said, I think that's enough uh, Jacob DeGrom rant for today. Uh, so we're going to head into the news and notes. Matt, you know the deal here. Just cut me off if I'm uh, ranting too much or if there's anything you'd like to add to what I'm saying here. Gotcha. So let's start off with some good news uh, for all fantasy owners that have for Tan- Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, you know, he's working his way back from that wrist injury. He has played in two minor league games so far. I believe he has two walks. He is hitless so far. But, you know, the good thing is, hey, that he's out there playing. Um, the Padres saying that he could be back within the next two weeks, could be sooner, could be later. Kind of think it depends on um, him and if he, you know, just starts uh, getting into that Tatis groove, right? Uh, then we got Anthony Rizzo. Um, you know, he's day-to-day with a sore back. Um, the Yankees are saying it's not nothing too big, but we'll keep an eye on that one and we'll keep you updated. Uh, then Clayton Kershaw, this one's a little bit interesting here. He's uh, headed to the 15-day IL with that back. It's been bothering him for, i say, the last three, four, five years at this point. And... And um, he received an epidural today or yesterday. Um, the Dodgers are saying that it's not too severe, but um, they're saying he will pitch again this season, which, you, I mean, you do like hearing that, but you don't like hearing at some point this season. So, you know, it's gonna a little ominous there, but we'll, we'll keep you updated um, as we hear more on uh, Clayton Kershaw. George Springer heads to the 10-day IL with um, – uh, elbow inflammation. It's the same elbow that's been bothering him all year. Um, that you don't like to hear that. There's no timetable on Mr. George Springer, so we'll keep you updated if when we do hear anything on that. Lance McCullers working his way back from that forearm strain. Uh, he gave up five runs, five innings, also struck out five. So I guess five is a wild there for Mr. Lance McCullers. He did get up to 86 pitches. Though. The Astros are saying he'll be back before the end of the month. This is probably your last chance to stash him if he's out there in your leagues. Uh, Lance Lance is a good pitcher when healthy, guys. So, um, you know, if he's out there, I definitely look to give him an add. Uh, this is another guy. If he's out there in your leagues, you know, it might be time to add him back to the roster. That's Jack Flaherty. Um, he's working his way back from that shoulder issue. Um, the Cardinals are saying he's, he's getting close to a rehab assignment. So, uh, you know, keep your eye out for that. You know, when, when Jack is going right, he is definitely one of the, I'd say, top 20 pitchers in baseball. But we haven't seen him. Super, super healthy for a while now. So once again, just uh, keep your keep your eye on that one. He's uh, worth Mitch an ad. And uh, Sorry. Jason Gora were both um, activated off the IL. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. Jump in. I, I know Jack Flaherty's one of your guys. So uh, yeah. let me hear your thoughts on it, Matt. I don't think he's going to be, you know, all that wonderful. I say he's definitely worth an ad if he's available, but I wouldn't hold your breath or count on him. I think that they're of trying to avoid a shoulder surgery, but yet is prolonging the fact that he's just going to miss now next season because I think he's just going to keep aggravating it. You know, he's been playing with it torn for two years. It's from what he said originally when he first got hurt. And then he comes back and he lasted, what, a week, two starts before he went back down. And now they're going to do the same thing again. It's irresponsible. You're actually ruining the kid's, uh, the kid's career at this point. Um, it's irresponsible management. He should have just had the, had the surgery and just missed this season. Because now I'm telling, I, I foresee his plan is just kicking in and saying, hey, I'm done. Yeah, honestly, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he just goes down again. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's a little bit odd that the way that the Cardinals are handling it. But, you know, as Matt, I'm sure Matt does agree with, you know, when, when Jack's going right, you know, he's he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. So, um, you know, kind of just a wait and see here with with uh, Jack. You know, if you do have the open IL spot, you know, I, I, I think he is worth the ad, you know, just to see where it goes. But, you know, as, as my brother Matt said, you know, it's definitely a, a high chance at re-aggravating that shoulder. Um, you know, if he goes back out there and he tries to overthrow or he pitches too many innings, you know, too many stressful innings, definitely a chance for re-injury there. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, Mitch Hanniger and um, Gene Segura both activated from the IL. Mitch Hanniger with Seattle, uh, Gene Segura with the Phillies. Both definitely worth an ad if they're out there in your leagues. Um, then we got Jordan Montgomery, you know, brand new St. Louis Cardinal. His leg started to cramp up. He was pitching great against, you know, his former team, the Yankees, before he was removed, though. Um, the Cardinals are saying that he'll be fine to make his next start. Just wanted to keep you guys updated just in case he doesn't. That, you know, there was a little uh, injury there with him. Uh, then we got Travis Darno, um, catcher for the Atlanta Braves. Um, X-rays came back clean on his leg. He had a collision um, in the Mets game over the weekend. They're saying he's day-to-day for now. But um, we do have um, – I'm just going to transition right into the waiver wire off of that one. And uh, his backup, William Contreras, somebody that we've talked about a bunch, bunch on this show, 
Um, he's going to be in for some more playing time this week. So if you do need a catcher, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about William Contreras and what he's been doing. He's actually been hot lately too. Um, he homered um, and he he homered in back-to-back games on August 5th and August 6th. On August 6th, um, there actually was a doubleheader. He went three for seven with the bomb I spoke of and two RBIs. On the year, William Contreras hit 257, 15 bombs, 29 RBIs, 29 runs as well, and two steals. And that's only in 191 at-bats. He's 40% owned. Um, you can go out there and snag on William Contreras in, uh, in uh, 60% of the leagues out there on Yahoo. And uh, I think he's definitely worth it. We've been raving about this kid all year long. Um, the brother of Wilson Contreras, if anybody did not know, um, just a stud. He's going to be raking in that uh, Braves lineup for years to come. I think he's their future uh, superstar catcher. So you definitely need to go out there and snag him right now, especially in your two catcher leagues. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is, you know, you're going to get a full-time playing catcher, which especially off the waiver. Yeah. That's hard to come by. So I, I would definitely scoop them up just based off of that. Cause I know that people that have catches out there are definitely struggling. You know, it's one of those things where you're probably going to get that real nice production. He's a power, he's a power bat for sure. His average is looking a little, a little bit on the decent side, which is good. And for a catcher, I'll take 257. And you know, you're going to see those counting stats from him because that lineup, that Braves lineup is just absolutely ridiculous. It's nearly homegrown too, which is really nice. It's, um, you know, Braves have really turned it around in terms of their farm system. So, you know, there's oh, yeah. more of that goodness that comes. I think they're probably one of the few pure teams in the league, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, you know, let's go William Contreras here. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> very excited. Funny, we brought him up like 75,000 times this yeah, year. He's just so much upside, though. 24 years old. He was an all-star this year. You know, got to play in the all-star game with his brother, Wilson. It was just awesome, awesome season for uh, William Contreras. Guys, go out there and snag him. Matt, you eyeing anybody next there on the, on the wave wire? Yeah, my man with 75 eligibilities, and um, that's Nick Gordon. Um, Another brother. That's D. Gordon's little brother. Yeah. Um, he, he's been low-key killing it recently. Um, you know, last week he had five five uh, runs, one one bomb, five ribbies, two stolen bases, batting before 17. So you already know what I'm going to say here. Yes, sir. Waiver wire. Pickups with that are batting good, that have good batting average is hard to come by. It seems like this year everybody's doing it, but <laughs> um, you know this kid's killing it overall on the season. He's batting two seventy eight. Um, not really a home run guy, but I mean, it's one of those things where I think that his stats can uptick a little bit, and if he keeps matching like this, I think he's definitely somebody that's at least worth ride the wave at twelve percent owned. And let's see if he sticks around on your roster or not, because I mean, shoot, he. That that four seventeen is just looking real sexy, along with the two stolen bases. Yeah, yeah, my brother, I'm 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 agreeing with you. I'm a big Nick Gordon fan. Honestly, he he's 26 years old. He's kind of a little bit of a late bloomer here in his career. Uh, when he was coming up through the minors, he was you know highly touted prospect. It's just taken him a little bit longer to click. But you know he's got a little bit of pop, a little bit of speed on the year. Nick Gordon's played 86 games, 237 at bats, 29 runs. Uh, five bombs, 20 ribbies, five steals, hitting that 278 that Matt mentioned. And uh, yeah, like I said, good power speed combo. He plays second short and outfield on Yahoo. He's 12% owned, so you can snag him for free 99 in pretty much every league right now. And uh, he's playing regularly. He's playing every day. I mean, he's hitting sixth, uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh in the lineup, so it's not horrible. You know, he's got the opportunity to drive some people in. I think he could totally do worse right now uh, than Nick Gordon if you need a little uh, middle middle infield or an outfielder. Uh, you know, he's playing every day, a little pop, a little bit of speed. So go out there and snag him. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about – let's talk about the, somebody we already mentioned, uh, Gene Segura just coming back off of, you know, the IL for the Phillies. The Phillies have been winning big the last few games. They've been kind of dominating. So uh, Gene Segura getting back into, you know, the middle of that lineup is going to be very, very nice. Uh, he went three for four on August 6th with a run and a steal. Uh, very, very good, very speedy guy. Also has a little bit of pop in that bat. Only second base eligible on Yahoo, you know, which is understandable. Uh, but you know what? On the year, Gene Segura, 23 runs, uh, six bombs, 19 RBIs, nine steals, hitting 277, um, you know, and that's in 177 at bat. So that's really, really good speed, uh, decent pop. The counting stats are good for the amount of games and at bats that he has. 46% owned um, on Yahoo. I'd probably prioritize him over Nick Gordon if you're going for second base right now. 
But, man, Gene Segura is back, and he's healthy, and uh, I really like him in the middle of that Phillies lineup. Even though he's been hitting seventh, I'm sure they're going to move him up sooner than later. I mean, before he got hurt, he was hitting at the top of the lineup. So yeah, yeah. I, I think that they, it's just a matter of a matchup game, uh, matchup situation. I, I think eventually we'll see him hitting number one, which then is going to really be driving in those those uh, runs for him. Um, I mean, shoot, the kid, the guy's got all the opportunity in the world. It's Billy's mashing right now, too. I mean, they just had like a nine-run game last night. So, you know, I, I could see a lot of upside for him, in the, at least in four categories, uh, mainly three. But I think Gene Segura definitely adds some value. He, he's somebody that you're probably going to end up on your, on your uh, playoff uh, rosters if he keeps going and stays healthy. But uh, let's bring up our last bat here, and that's Mr. Seth Brown. Um, let me get his stats up here real quick. Um, he's an interesting ad, somebody I really haven't heard too much about until recently, but over the last month, he's been murdering it. I mean, 11 runs, seven bombs, 12 ribbies, a stolen base, batting 324. So you already know what I'm going to say about batting average. I don't need to say it for the 15th time. <laughs> um, and last week, too, two, two, four, one, four, seventeen. So let's go. I mean, you know, he, he seems like a very solid bat. Only 32% owned. I think that right now he's going to be a, a nice little ride the wave. Um, and he's got 17 bombs on the season. Um, batting average has been a little down at 238. But I think, you know what, his batting average, not going to say he's going to stay this high, obviously. But, you know, I can see him at least contributing in that category. And, hey, ride the wave. Because, I mean, hey, there's a bunch of injuries right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in with you. I, this is a guy I wish that would have got moved um, during, you know, the trade deadline because if, if Seth Brown would have went to a good team while he's hot here, you know, he's stuck in Oakland right now, not doing him any favors. But as Matt mentioned, you know, got 17 bombs on the year. He's got eight steals. He's got 48 RBIs and uh, 323 at-bats. So, you know, that's not too bad. Um, definitely contributing in at least uh, three categories there, you know, and um, – yeah, so, so he's got first base and outfield eligibility. That's Seth Brown again, 32% owned on Yahoo. Uh, I would go out there and snag him if I need a little bit of power. You know, he's been heating up. He had two bombs on July 29th, another bomb on July 30th, a bomb on August 4th, a bomb on August 7th. So he's just been hot lately. You know, if, if you need first base and outfield, uh, that's why we're bringing Seth Brown up. Definitely feel free to go out there and add him. Uh, you know, let's uh, let's go into pitchers real quick. And uh, once again, feel like we might be beating a dead horse with this guy because, you know, we talk about him all the time, and that's Keegan Thompson. Still only 46% owned on Yahoo, guys. we got to go out there and snag Keegan Thompson, right? Uh, he's got two great matchups this week. He goes up against Washington and uh, the Cincinnati Reds. So, you know, nice two-start week for the kid. On the year, his numbers are still looking, you know, pretty good. With 93 innings, 83 Ks, eight wins on that Chicago Cubs team where, you know, it's very hard to come across wins. 3-4-8 ERA and a one two seven whip for Keegan Thompson. Uh, I, I like what the kid has. You know, he did go out there against the Cardinals and get lit up last time. But, you know, everyone's getting lit up against the Cardinals with Nolan and Goldie and that, that team with all those young players. Very tough team to pitch well against. But I think for this week, you know, with those two starts, Feel free to go out there and snag Keegan Thompson with confidence. And uh, I think he's got a couple couple more easy matchups going forward, too, because I, I have him on a bunch of my teams, so I was kind of looking ahead. The matchups look good for the rest of the way for Keegan Thompson. Definitely go out there and snag kid. I mean, you're going to see it from a young pitcher. He's going to get hit, hit a little bit more often than these veterans or what and whatnot. So I think that he's definitely a strong ad. You kind of just play, you play the matchup game, right? So if he's got a two-star week and he's going up against St. Louis, you're probably not going to play him. But if he has a somewhat of a fluff, a fluff matchup or it, it's somewhat of a decent matchup where you probably can roll him out or you need the stats, he's going to get the job done. I mean, the kid is throwing up the Ks. Um, and if you're just down in Ks and it's a Sunday and that's all you need and you don't care what happens to your um, to your ERA or your whip, who cares? Roll him out there because he's going to get you the Ks. The kid is really good. I'm, I'm, I'm truly impressed with the kid. Um, but, I mean, I think I think I've, we've covered enough on him, especially for the last, like, 19 weeks. Um, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Let's bring up somebody that I'm a huge fan of, and uh, finally he's starting to get get right here, and that's Mr. James Caprillion. I'm finally pronouncing his name right after I was just 17 about to say, years. you nailed it, you nailed yeah. it. Um, you know, he's, he's looking real good. I mean, over the last two weeks, he's had two Ws, eight Ks, a 1.59 ERA with a 106 whip in 11 innings um, last month. Two dubs, 16 to 11, and a point nine eight. So this is great. This is really great. Last outing was against the Angels. Outing before that was against the White Sox. 
Uh, and that was a 169 and a 150 ERA. It's the Texans, a zero ERA, new runs given up. He got, you know, he's looking like his old self from last year. I'm really excited about it. I hope he keeps this up because I really do think he's a strong talent. He's actually, funny enough, one of the guys that went over in the Sunny Gray trade from the Yankees, SMH. Um, but, you know, I, I think that there's something real here. And he's rolling out against the Angels again. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be another nice start right there. So I say, let's go. Let's roll him out. And I think that he had some long-term value. He's got 11% owned. And, um, you know, let's go. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a big James Caprillion fan. I remember when the Yankees drafted him, I was very, very high on him. He's just a guy with the flanges, man. He's He's had so many uh, injuries and surgeries over the year. It's hard to even keep track of at this point. But as Matt mentioned, you know, out of his last, it looks like one, two, three, four, five. Out of his last six starts, five of them are quality. So, you know, you definitely take that. He's not really a strikeout guy, you know. So, you know, if you're looking for K's, might look somewhere else. But, you know, he's been suppressing the runs lately. The whip's been good. Um, as Matt mentioned, he went out there against the last time against the Angels, picked up the win. He gets the Angels again on August 9th. Uh, I think he could go out there. And it, this one's in Oakland. So, you know, it's a, he's going to be at home with the big park to pitch in. Hey, as long as Otani doesn't get to him, they really don't have too many other threats right now, especially with Mike Trout out. Uh, I think I think he's definitely worth the stream for this week. I um, think he might get the Astros next week, though. Might, might, might try and avoid that one. But definitely for this week, I like the outlook for Caprillion. Definitely go out there and snag him. He is 10% owned on Yahoo, so definitely, definitely worth the ad for at least this week. Uh, next up, let's go with um, let's go with the young kid. Let's go with George Kirby, and he's looked um, absolutely back to his um, – uh, a pristine form uh he went out there against um you know the the angels six innings picked up the win eight k's gave up a run and a one whip and the time before that against the astros gave up a couple runs but struck out seven over four and uh one whip so you know this is definitely if you're looking for k's i might look in uh, george kirby's direction right he goes up against the texas rangers on the 12th and they haven't been great this year um, and on the year, George Kirby's just – those numbers look really, really good. It kind of reminded me of Logan Gilbert from last year, right? Uh, 79 innings, 81 Ks, three wins, 340 ERA, and a 117 whip on the year for Kirby. I think he might be one of the big breakouts for next year. Once again, my comp for him is, is very Logan Gilbert-ish in the sense of decent rookie year and then comes into his second year and looks a lot better, figured a bunch of things out. Uh, you know, and, and I might be might have something to do with them actually being on the same team. Looks like Seattle kind of knows what they're doing over there with those young pitchers. So, um, you know, I don't even know if I said it, but he, George Kirby is 35% owned on Yahoo. So you can go out there and get him in most of the leagues right now. Um, if you're looking long term with him, Seattle might be looking uh, to limit his innings. So he might be a guy on a more of a start to start kind of basis. But I really do love the outlook for George Kirby. And at worst, you stream him for this week against um. Texas, and I think that one's going to go very, very well for you. Yeah, Kirby's a great talent. Um, you know, he's probably one of the better prospects this year. Really excited yeah. to see what he'll do in year two. Um, you know, usually if they start off this hot year two, is a lot better for a pitcher. Um, it's just going to be it's going to be nice to really watch and see what he brings to the table next year. He's going to have a nice ranking next year. I'm going to tell you that much. Yeah, for sure. um, and the outlook is going to be nice. But uh, I think you covered it pretty much, and we've been covering him for the last couple of weeks. Move on to our last arm, and that's Mr. Kyle Gibson of Philadelphia. We don't try and plan this out, guys. I just happen to always get the Philly guys. And it's not <laughs> a um, but, you know, Kyle Gibson looks like he's kind of returning the form a little bit. You know, over the last two – actually, over the last month, he's actually had a really good month. Um, he's not really a K-9 guy, which is fine, though, but he's got three Ws, which is really nice, especially with that Philadelphia team. You're going to get the wins, 18 Ks on 31 innings. Um, and – you know, 287 ERA with a point, you know, whip. You can't really beat that kind of production, especially when you're doing it for a month long. I think that it's a solid ad for now. Um, let's see what his next matchup is going to be. It's looking Miami. like Miami. Yeah, that, so, that's know, the big reason I threw him on here is that Miami yeah. matchup on the 11th looks pretty sweet. Yeah, so that's a fluff matchup right there. So, you know, I would definitely take that. And then let's roll and see who he's getting with the next thought. And then hopefully he can just help you get some county stats and really bring you up. And if he's got a nice little string of games, which – I know they, they play Miami a ton. They're going to be playing Washington a ton. The only time you're really going to be crying is when they got to play the Braves. Yeah, so, the Mets. <laughs> all the Mets. So, there's only two times I wouldn't be rolling them out there. But yeah, yeah, I know there's probably. still a ton of games between those two teams. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of a lot of matchups. You could take advantage and get yourself to some fantasy uh, 
victory and manufacture some wins with, with uh, Kyle Gibson. Yeah, uh, as Matt mentioned, you know, four out of his last five starts have looked uh, very, very good for Kyle Gibson. And the last one specifically against the Nationals, he went eight innings, got the win, four Ks, uh, gave up a run and a .38 whip. So, you know, uh, you can use Kyle Gibson in, in those soft matchups. That, like I was saying, on August 11th, he gets Miami. You definitely want to throw him out there for that one. I don't know if I'm counting on him for anything beyond that. But he's definitely, Kyle Gibson is definitely, definitely uh, a great stream uh, for at least that one matchup. And I will say this, the ERA is a little bit inflated on the year at 436, right? But the whip looks good, a 117 whip. I'll take that. You know, he's got seven wins, uh, as Matt and I mentioned multiple times in this podcast. Uh, Philly's been hot lately, so, you know, you definitely at least want to, you know, throw him out there. And he'll. I think he'll pick up the W for you against the Miami Marlins, fingers crossed, right? So, uh, guys, that's uh, starting pitchers. And we're going to, we got a couple of closers here for you. You know, a couple of guys that have been getting saves recently. I actually like these guys. Uh, Ian Kennedy has a lot, a lot of um, save experience over the last few years. And it looks like he took the job um, from Mark Melanson. So, you know, he did get hit in his last one. But before that, you know, he got the last two saves cleanly for, um, you know, the Arizona Diamondbacks. And his numbers on the year are pretty solid. Uh, on the year, Ian Kennedy has 36 innings, 34 Ks, six saves, four wins. 3-2-2 ERA and a 1-2-7 whip. And I think uh, I think the whip comes down a little bit. I think the strikeouts go up a little bit. Um, you know, uh, Ian Kennedy's a very, very experienced closer. He's 13% owned on Yahoo. Um, as I mentioned, he has six saves on the year. So I think going forward, um, unless he really starts getting hit around again, you know, I, I think he's going to be the guy to close out the year for the Diamondbacks. So, you know, if you need a, if you need a closer, Ian Kennedy, 13% owned on Yahoo right now. Definitely, definitely worth the add. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at it like this, too. I mean, yeah, he, Diamondbacks suck, and he's not going to be in a lot of those positions, but he's still the guy getting him going into those position, that position. So, you know, you kind of just got to take it for what you are and take your lumps when you can because, you know what, it's not like it's really easy to get saves out there, so you take it where you can. Let's move on to our last guy here, um, and that's Mr. Jonathan Hernandez. Um, I'm just pulling up his name real quick. He's a Texas Ranger. Um, you know, not the actual cowboy cop, but, you know, Texas Ranger team. Ha uh, ha, funny, funny, 12% on. Um, he's gotten um, a save at least the last two weeks. So, you know, it's something worth a note. Somebody that, you know, hopefully has a job and hopefully Texans can kind of figure it out to, you know, put him in a position to get more saves. So I would say let's ride it and see what it is. It looks like he's the guy right now at least. Yeah, with the thing with Jonathan Hernandez specifically is I know they got um I think it's Joe Barlow coming back uh sooner mm -hmm. than later. So the thing is is he might be good for save short term. Um I'll tell you this, they were kind of grooming him though to you know be that guy to be the you know the future closer for Texas. And he was only twenty five years old. He missed um all of Joe Barlow will be back tomorrow. So Joe Barlow. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, guys, you know, keep an eye out on, on how they shake things out there with Texas, right? Uh, the Barlow Hernandez situation. I would keep my eye on it, see who they lean uh, to a little bit more. I know Barlow was getting the close of uh, saves, um, you know, pretty much for the whole year for Texas. So if they do lean back in that direction, go out there and pick up Joe Barlow. Um, Matt, you 38 percent. You're on the nose with that. So, you know, uh, Barlow's out there in almost all your leagues. Um, I probably pr prioritize him over um, Hernandez at the moment. But they could stick with Hernandez. I wouldn't be surprised. On the year, Hernandez does have very good numbers. I'm just going to read those off to you real quick. Uh, seven innings, seven Ks, uh, those two saves um, that Matt mentioned lately, 257 ERA and the one whip. So it's going to be interesting to see um, where Texas goes with that. Um, but, guys, you know what? That's about it for today. You know, uh, we're going to wrap things up here. So um, until Wednesday, guys. Peace. See you.